Welcome to TLC for the Soul podcast, where soul meets spirit. You have entered into sacred space. I'm your host, Tammy Lynn Chambers, and I'm here to help you shine. Now let's get going on this podcast journey. Welcome, friends. Welcome to yet another episode of the podcast. I'm excited for this one. Very excited for this experiential. So we're flipping the script a little bit on Sundays. So if you're new here, settle in. Welcome to our family. If you're a returning listener, welcome back. Let's get us all into sacred space. If you're new, you may want to settle back. Definitely if you're new and you're not certain what this is about, I would definitely listen to it once before maybe you commit to anything, unless you're just a go-getter and you're like, like me, I'd be like, I want to do this experience for sure. If you're a returning listener, or if you want to take your experience an octave higher, I invite you to join me around the sacred fire circle as I wrap us all in love light and light love. Inviting in the spirit guides, totems, wisdom keepers, archangels who are supporting us on this podcast episode. You can choose to take take your listening experience an octave higher and invite in your own guides, wisdom keepers, soul friends definitely invite in some guides that you trust on this particular journey and I will share why well you can invite in guides you trust implicitly meaning you you are very comfortable working with them you 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 trust their guidance it's not that you trust their guidance because their guidance is always pure but sometimes there's certain ones where it's like you're able to open up more freely with them and even if they tell you something that seems kind of weird, like you accept that because it either res well, it has to resonate with you. Like you wouldn't just get weird guidance and just accept it blindly, but if it resonates with you, but it sounds like not logically what is in your current 3d reality right now. Like they're showing you something that is a portent because remember we're still in our overarching theme for the next three months of, um, omens and signs and the holy made manifest so this is very interesting for this episode you can also invite in a, a new guide oh so shit but got how to eat to hold on let's just ground for a minute because my crown is like super okay there's a lot of downloads coming through but there's a lot of earth stuff. Hold on. I'm going to bring in earth dragons really quick before I go into anything because we need to get grounded here. Otherwise, we're not going to get through this episode. And if it's me feeling this way, it's me feeling this way, but it's probably you listening to this too. Um, and you need to be able to like ground in and hear what I'm saying. This is a very grounding episode. We're working with a, a mountain and a volcano. Hold on. So earth medicine, earth light language. Ooh, this is earth dragon. Ooh, yeah. Let's take a deep breath. Okay, that's a little bit better. (laughs) So before we jump right into this, I do have a few little Sunday morning (laughs) things to share. Just quickly though. Um... For those of you that are new here, this is not just, and even those of you who have recently gotten here and you're kind of like, what is this TLC for this whole thing all about? So I am an author, an artist, and a master healer. And 
if you just come in kind of new, you may just feel more of the, you know, oh, she writes some books and stuff. So I do want to, to make sure that you're aware of like all the things that happen here on the podcast. Yes, it has to do with writing and authoring and I write channeled fiction books and you can read all those for free on my um, Smashwords or at any ebook publisher, Apple Books, Barnes and Noble, Google Books, all of that. I'm also an artist and I design and create oracle decks. I have six oracle decks out, 10 or so published books, um, and all of my oracle decks are available through my printer, Make Playing Cards, my online shop, which all the links to all the stuff I talk about is here on the show notes. But the thing that we don't dive into as much is I am a master healer. And that is part of all the services that I offer. And on Friday, if you listen to my diatribe on new services, um, (laughs) then I just want to share with you, um, you know, a little bit of background there just quickly. Um, So I am a master healer. I'm a Reiki master teacher. I am a medium, a psychic intuitive. I'm an Arcturian master healer working directly with the Arcturians through starseed stuff. I'm a light language DNA activator. I am a (laughs) ancestral gatekeeper, um, rainbow light warrior, as well as a blue ray, twin flame. Um, Lots of, oh, so many chills. Lots of stuff going on, lots and lots of soul experience to gather upon, working through um, some of my starseed experiences and um, working directly through the angelic realms, along with working through some of the earth sacred spaces to bring in like earth medicine magic. Um, I am a shamanic practitioner. I am a druid, um, practicing druid through bar, oh, bards, ovates, and druids, order of bards, ovates, and druids. Um, <laughs> and on and on, um, you know, all these different um, things from past life as well as bringing them to light here. So, the I am a weaver, not so much a necessarily a dream weaver, but I'm a weaver of magic and healing. And that is instilled and invoked throughout the majority of this podcast. And when you come here, and you hear something like a story or whatever, it's done with different intentions to weave magic throughout, weave the magic of healing for whatever is most needed by you in this now throughout each episode. So when we say choose your listening experience, it is just that. It's you can just sit and listen and be a little bit more 3D, like, okay, it's a story about a pixie carnival or whatever, like we did on Friday. Or as I weave, and I very intentionally, and sometimes unintentionally, because the guides come in and help out with this too, weave that experience into your own reality, help you have the experience that you need. So that is what's going to happen with these. So that is part of all the services that I offer is we offer like an experiential or an experience through some different doorways and portals that are gateways into the healing that you need. So I do work a lot with sacred sites and sacred intentions and through some of the energy stories and stuff. So this one is very interesting to me. I got this download last night. Um, It has to do with activating our second sacred key. Um, This is all part of our scavenger hunt that happened at the end of June. So if you're new here, you haven't done this scavenger hunt, um, I would say the time don't think about it in linear time, even though we're, even though what I, even though I'm going to make some time references here, if you hear this episode and you're like, I want the whole experience, then I invite you to go back to the scavenger hunt. I'll try to remember to link it in the show notes. I don't always remember, um, but you can definitely scroll back in the podcast and look for the Sisters of the Sword episode that has the scavenger hunt and then the Divine Masculine SOS that has the treasure map activation. And then you'll have to do the 777 um, key code activation number one. And I would not back to back these, but that's up to you. I would at least, at least how much? A week in between each of these if you're starting fresh. Oh, ants have found me again. Okay have to move from the ant. Always. Never fails. Okay. Ants. 
So this is Kilimanjaro, and today we're doing base camp. So last night, I was sitting there just um, contemplating and mulling over, not med necessarily meditating, although I was in a very receptive state. And I was asking my guides, like, okay, I feel like I'm done with key number one. So key number one for me, what, or sacred object number one, key number one, was the blue ball. And for me, that was the Pleiadians and bringing in more inner child um, playfulness into everything that I do, which I think if you're... Oh my God, there goes the bug up my nose again. <laughs> what happens with these episodes with the bugs? Um, I think if you've been listening to me for the past you know, three or four episodes or so when we've been bringing in the Pleiadians, you would see like, yeah, it seems like definitely more playful, not so serious. Um, and then through the magic of the podcast, you would have started in your own life feeling more inner child stuff too. That's how we weep the work we weave so last night I was like okay I'm ready for sacred key number two and I feel like it's supposed to be activated um, at this time out of time we have a very powerful gateway coming they're all powerful gateways but this one just feels oh anything between like I told you the key like June-ish mid-June the solstice to Lionsgate is just freaking crazy <laughs> in terms of the weird I don't want to call it weird energies, but just stuff we're opening up to. So for me, sacred key number two, and you might go get your sacred object, your, the one that you feel like is your second one, because I felt very drawn to like, okay, the blue ball is number one. My beekeeper that I, that my Lego beekeeper guy is number three and number two. And I think I, no, I didn't even find them in that order. I found them in the reverse order, but I feel like they, that they're working now in this, whatever. Um, uh, number two is some sort of weird connector and it has to do with divine counterparts um, I'm not going to say the TF word because well yeah it has to do with twin flame energy not and twin flame energy okay this is very critical twin flame is an energy not a person okay it's not a particular person to be on a twin flame journey and to truly be in a twin flame relationship, both parties are, it's a divine feminine and a divine masculine ascended partnership is what a truly divine counterpart twin flame relationship is all about. And that's as far as I'm going to take that right now because that's a whole other episode coming up. I've already recorded the video for that one. But I've just been, like, reluctant to put that video out there right now. And I think that the Spirit's like, you're still waiting to, to put that out there. So key code number two is going to activate on this very powerful, oh, my God, the time out of time. We're going to be in a void space when we activate it. Next um, Sunday's episode, we're going to do the activation for key code number two. And we will be smack dab in the middle of the Aquarius full moon, which is crazy in and among itself. We'll be right in that Mayan um, galactic gate opening that 25th, I think, is the time out of time, like no time. And then the 26th, I think, is the first day of the new galactic year. And then we're heading straight after that, straight into Lionsgate. And Kilimanjaro kept coming to me last night. And I was like, what about Kilimanjaro? What do you want to show me? Like, I don't know anything about you. I didn't know where it was. Um, I want, I, like I said, mountains and specifically volcanoes have been calling for a while. And when I looked it up, uh, well, first of all, I asked my guides to show me. I didn't look it up right away because I don't like to be influenced by anything that I read before I really feel into the energy. And for me, sometimes it's, it's like a feeling I have to have. So it's my clear sentience and my clear, it's not a knowing, it's a feeling, it's clear sentience. I have to like feel it. Oh, the little butterfly just flew right by. So cute. So... I was like, who are you, Kilimanjaro, and why are you here? And what is it about some of these, because Kilimanjaro is like a very famous, right, for mountain climbing. Like everybody wants to summit these big, highest, tallest mountains of the world kind of thing. And, oh, so many chills. And spirit, and specifically Archangel Michael, Archangel Metatron, 
and Archangel Haniel for me, like a lot of the archangels started coming in and saying, this is a summit to the top. So this is going higher metaphorically in your spiritual beingness, in your consciousness. Um, oh, there's so many metaphors here. It goes super deep and I'm not even sure I can put it all into words without spending like hours talking about it. Oh gosh, the Divine Masculine's here, the little Cardinal's here. So I'm just going to, as best I can, weave this and invite the spirit of what I'm talking about, the spirit of the mountain to come into your space and that you experience it in whatever way is best for you. For me right now, it's a feeling and clear audience. I hear it tells me and I see but for you, it may be, you may experience it through different senses that are more meaningful to you. So I don't want to try to sway that experience at all. But I did invite my guides into sacred space as soon as Kilimanjaro came and it's like, you need to do something on the podcast for the second key activation and summiting Kilimanjaro in terms of a journey. This is not even the key code activation. This is the preparation to get to the key code activation of your second key. So whatever your second key is, it must be a really big one. The second one seems like this really big thing. So we're starting out today with base camp and I'll let them come in in just a second and talk about what that all entails. Um, it's more, I think, just an allowing of the experience, but what happens when you're at base camp? Okay, so I wanna set the stage for what's going to happen because this is a three times three, three by three experience, this experiential. So it's like we have base camp and then three days from now, midweek of this coming week, I'll be doing um, like the midpoint there's like a, um, a, a midpoint camp. I don't know what it's technically called, like it's really called on the mountain. There's like a space you get kind of halfway up and there's like a camp there. And we have to stop and we have to rest and we have to do some things there at that camp on day, what I'm calling, uh, I don't know what it's called, what it's gonna be called, but midweek we'll be doing that episode. And then the time out of time next Sunday, um, we will be doing the summit of Kilimanjaro. So we will have reached the top. We will have experienced whatever we need to experience between now and then to um, actually then move forward with activating this second sacred key. Um, All right, this is what they want me to say about this. So this is a journey. Obviously, it's a sacred container, so it's it's like <clears throat> there goes the divine masculine again, the cardinal. It's worlds within worlds within worlds. So, if you're listening to this, if you're following me at all, I would say you're an intermediate to advanced practitioner. And if you're new, then you can definitely soak up some stuff by listening. But some of it may go a little over your head, and you may still want to experience it. But you may have to experience it once and then come back and do it again later. If you're an experienced traveler already, then you know you don't travel without any preparation at all. And you definitely wouldn't summit one of the highest mountain peaks in the world without preparing yourself. So this is making sure that if you are committing to the climb, that you have your spiritual tools in check, that you are allowing yourself time to meditate, to clear and shield your energy every day, not because of the mountain itself, but because of the experience you're gonna go through on the way to the top, okay? On the way to the top. Oh, it brings that lover boy song. Take me to the top, take me to the top, take me to the top. Okay, sorry. <laughs> oh, here's looking at you. Chances are we're gonna make it together. Who's holding your hand? Oh, I'm probably not supposed to, oh, YouTube, whatever. <laughs> Do the things I have to do. What's a poor boy to do when he's falling in love with you? And as I'm singing that, the ting divine masculine red cardinal is sitting right there. Okay, and Lover Boy, if you look at that, if you look up that song and you look up that album cover, it's all red. I think he's wearing like red leather pants, and it's a very like whoop, it's like a hip shot of some guy. Oh god, okay, stop. I'm gonna get off track. 
well, I'm not off track because everything that happens during the podcast is part of the podcast. So there's something going on there for those of you listening with the Divine Masculine, Take Me to the Top, and Kilimanjaro. At least that's part of my experience. So, holy smokes. Just make sure you're prepared to do this journey. Um, It's going to weave itself into your everyday life, meaning that whatever it is that is special about this second key will start to show itself to you. Um, and it could, it could, in a sense, like rock your world. I'm telling you, it could be like, well, that doesn't make logical sense based on my current now reality. And that's what they were showing me this morning. Every morning, I draw my cards for the day and I got, oh my God, you guys, the cards I got. Um, I got two of cups, three of swords. Um, I don't even remember the other. Oh, I got the tower card, two tower cards. I got the stag or the buck, which this full moon coming up is a full buck moon. Um, and for me, the buck or the stag um, is the, is a divine masculine or a divine counterpart kind of a um, creature. It's not about the divine masculine, but we've been working with the hind and the stag and the deer all month too as part of our spirit guides. And I have the cards I got. Oh, and I got a love card and I got this. Oh, and I got don't judge, don't judge your experience. So, and the fact that we were, I was, I just strongly felt like I'm being, I and you will be as part of this experiential starting to be shown things that in your current now reality are like, how would that, how's that going to happen? You know, it definitely is not indicative of what I'm seeing right now in front of me. Um, and then so you're being asked to trust and you're also being asked to affirm. Like if you're being shown something that is something that's it's going to be really good stuff, but it's just going to feel weird. This is a very surreal time, this mountain climb. I'm telling you, it's going to be very weird. If you resonate with it and you vibe with it, then you're going to you're going to want to be like, yes, I want that. I want that. Uh, yes, source, like you want to affirm that you want that, that you're being shown um, so that spirit and source and the universe know that to bring that to you and that you could do that through the, the power of prayer. You could do that through, you know, your affirmations, your visualizations, however you do to kind of affirm that, yes, that's the reality that I do want to be in. And then they're saying, surround yourself with things that remind you of that reality. So you're immersing yourself in the feeling, the sensing of being, or the visioning or hearing of being in that reality. So if it's whatever, like love, let's just say it's love, then you know you want to hear love songs and watch romantic movies and envision this, envision the, as Abraham Hicks would say, and, and envision the positive aspects of that experience and of that relationship and if it's something else that you're working towards you know all the same thing applies but just the subject matter is different i asked what guides would be leading the podcast overarching um through this journey and i did get the like i said the archangels Archangel Metatron, Archangel Michael. You can work with any of those if you don't have one. But we did also get, oh my God, I'm getting chills. A Sherpa, a Sherpa elder. And I was like, who's this Sherpa elder? Like, I don't know this, I don't know this guy. And it's like, it's not a, it's not an individual. Oh my God, I'm getting emotional. It's not an individual person. It's an aspect of the mountain. This mountain, let me tell you, this freaking mountain is so I can't even say it's like so multidimensional that anything is possible as you make this climb anything is possible I would say that the the motto or the affirmation the overarching affirmation of this experiential is anything have the mindset of anything is possible because that's what this climb is going to show you that's what this mountain is going to show you and I was like, who's this guy? And it's like, it's a Sherpa elder, but, it, but elder, but it is an aspect of consciousness of the mountain in the form of a Sherpa guide. 
leading you up the mountain because it's not you guys if you've ever watched if you've ever climbed a mountain oh my god more power to you I wish I could but because I physically can't um, to me it's almost more exciting to take this energetic journey up the mountain because I can go up any mountain I want I don't have to physically train <laughs> I don't have to bear the the altitude adjustments and all that although we will have altitude altitude adjustments in the form of consciousness upgrades as we're going on this journey. So I would definitely call if you're ever not sure, like, am I going up the mountain? Which way do I go? Does it seem like I can't, maybe there's some sort of um, snowstorm that's blocking your vision, or I think you're gonna encounter all sorts of elements and elementals on this journey. Um, but the your guide, whoever it is you chose, this Sherpa, who is a consciousness of the mountain, and Archangel Michael or Archangel Metatron, any of those or all of those, if you're ever at a point where you're like, I know I'm on this climb, but I definitely don't know if I'm going backwards, forwards, sideways, up or down, then um, have those guides definitely step in and help show you the way forward. Um, so it could be that you get, you know, caught up in an emotion or something you have to work through or um, they're saying disbelief is going to be your biggest um, harbinger. What is a harbinger? <laughs> I don't even know what that is. I tell you, they give me words sometimes that I'm like, what? Hold on. Let me just make sure I understand. Can you guys show me? Thank you. They show me really quickly. A person or thing that announces or signals the approach of another. A forerunner of something. A forerunner of something. Disbelief being a forerunner of something. Okay, so the disbelief will have to be cleared. Otherwise, that's what's going to catch you up. In this case, it's going to like haunt you and make you not able to move forward because... You can't not believe what you want to, is going to come to you. Otherwise, it's not going to come to you. You'll just forever be in that loop of thinking that it can't happen. Oh, my God, you guys. Okay, so base camp between now and Wednesday is, is prep, getting ready, meeting with your guides, finding out what it is that you need to know before you start walking, <laughs> climbing. Um, I get the sense too that with this um, this experiential that you'll be called to get out and wander and meander and climb and move a little bit. Not just climb, like hike and move about in nature as if you were climbing the mountain. Uh, and then they're just abruptly, they're like, and that's it. That's what you have to do. You have to get your sacred tools together, get very clear in your mind, um, sit down and meditate or call your guides in, say, I'm ready to do this, show me what I need to be shown. And, and we're doing that here really right now as a collective podcast family. We're inviting in all those elements. We're here at base camp together, right? Because you would never, well, you might summit by, you might climb by yourself, but I don't think, they're saying it's really not advised that you ever climb anywhere like that alone. You would have like a, a, a party of people with you and you, and you would have, some of you would have like a guide unless you're very experienced and you've already done this before. So we're here together. We're at base camp. We're going to eat heartily. We're going to, this is another thing. Your, your appetite is going to increase a little bit, I think. So just go with that. Let your body have what it needs to have. And it may be stuff that you don't typically have. And that's okay. Just allow yourself for this week to do that. Okay. Because a lot of you have been depriving yourself of things. And it, it happened to me a lot yesterday too, as I ate something, I felt really guilty about it. And then I had this dream that I really wanted that same thing too. And the angels were kind of like, okay, just let yourself have that for now. Don't guilt out about it. And you can get back on your regular regime after Lionsgate. It looks like between now and Lionsgate, we're going to be kind of pulled out of the normal a little bit. So let yourself have it and don't let guilt creep in. Um, we need to eat heartily and lots of, um, it sounds like protein is going to be coming up. And I have been craving chicken a lot. And believe me, I am strictly like no meat. But chicken came in, and then the guides showed me chicken in a 
like chicken breast with like smothered <laughs> stuff I wouldn't normally eat, like smothered in cheese. And I was like, ah, no, I can't normally have that. But they're like, just let yourself have it for now and just trust that that's going to be fine. It's just a temporary thing. Okay. If you're craving that, um, because you use a lot of muscle power. If you were climbing physically, you'd be using, using a lot of muscle power. So because you've entered into the spirit of a mountain climb, your body and your brain and your muscles and all that need a little bit more fuel during this time. So I do want you, I want you to go through this whole experience of this three-part experiential. These are services that I am going to put up as my new services as well. Um, I don't know anything about them yet. I want to experience this whole thing. But if you enjoy this, then that is definitely something I, I will be offering on a personal basis. Um, yeah, I think in the next couple of days or so, I'm going to work out what all of that means. But if you're interested, you can email the show. That's how you book any service with me anyway, is you have to email me um, I need to, at that point, if you're interested, ping your energy and just make sure that what you're asking or what you're wanting is what's in your best and highest good. And then we work out all the other details after that. Everything I do is audio recorded. I don't do any face-to-face -face stuff because these are all, working with me is all experiential. And you can read all about that on my website. I have a link to what it is, how we work together through some of this stuff or on this stuff when you when you devote yourself to spending time with a with, with one of my services. All right, so let me just check in, see if there's anything else. So they do want us to do a little group kind of prayer here together before we get started. Um, because we are one, we are one anyway, but we're a climbing group here during this time period and so you know there, right now there is not like a a group space where everyone can go and like share their experiences if you guys want that you can reach out and tell me you know if enough people want that I would set something up for that but if nobody wants that then I'm not gonna waste my time <laughs> because my time is precious and I don't want to waste my time doing that if nobody's interested but if, if enough people want a, like a group chat kind of experience then we can find a platform to do that so we can talk about what's happening. See, I would love to hear what's happening for you guys as you are doing these things. So, God, they're saying Discord, but I'm just not familiar with it. My son is like a huge Discord user. Maybe Discord? We could open up a server there. I don't know. But anyway, let's just do a quick little... All right. A quick little prayer before we end this. And then I will send you on your way to see what kind of experiences show up in your day. Beloved Source, Mother, Father, God. Holy Angels, Archangels, Holy Spirit, all the helping spirits, spirit guides, named and unnamed, seen and unseen, calling in your support, your guidance to Kilimanjaro, our Sherpa guide, asking for your wisdom, protection, experience, knowledge, calling in blessings, miracles, and magic as this climb team, the TLC for the Soul climb team, makes this sacred ascent up this most precious and sacred friend. I want to thank Mount Kilimanjaro for reaching out to me. As with all of my sacred journeys, I take this very seriously. I'm honored to be working with you. So as for blessings on this journey up to mid camp, midpoint camp, in full faith and trust, so be it, so be it. And so it is. All right, you guys. Let's put your, I'll put your hand, physically take your hand, put it into the middle. We're going to kind of put our hands all together. One, two, three, and whoa, we're going to do it. <laughs> like a yeehaw, we're doing this climb. All right, you guys. So I'm going to leave you with this for Sunday. 
and I will see you again in three days. By then we will have reached the midpoint, have some experiences to share with what's going on, what we've learned about our sacred key, our sacred second key, and we will do whatever we are guided to do for that second part. That's probably a resting spot, <laughs> second base camp. All right, you guys, I want to thank you so much for joining me. We will see you again soon in the next episode. Take care. This episode has been brought to you by Relics Bookshop, Oak Ridge's premier location for magical books, sacred tools, candles, body care items, and more. Be you wizard, muggle, or witch, Relics has something for everyone. Thank you so much for listening.